Today we're going to look at combining the drag and drop framework with RAD tab control. RAD drag and drop manager is part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight WPF control suite for .NET XAML development. In this video we're going to use the drag and drop framework with the RAD tab control. Your user will be able to drag and drop items between tabs quickly and easily. Let's go ahead and jump inside of Visual Studio 2010 and get started. So here we are, we're inside of Visual Studio 2010. I'm just going to go File, New Project. I'm going to select Silverlight and RAD Control Silverlight Application. I'm going to give this the name of RAD Drag Drop Tab Control TTV for Telerik TV. Next we're going to host the Silverlight application in a new website and we're also going to be using Silverlight version 5. On our next screen is our project configuration wizard. I'm just going to simply place a check here in Telerik.Windows.Controls and hit the finish button. Once our project finishes spinning up, we can look here under references and see Telerik.Windows.Controls. And if we also expand our user control window here, then we will see that the Telerik XML namespace has already been added for us as well. So just like our first project, I'm going to begin by adding a folder here called images. So I'm going to simply go add new folder and I'm just going to type in images here. And I'm going to go ahead and add some existing images that I already have on my machine. So the images are located here and then I'm going to simply hit add and they've now been added to my project. I'm now going to go ahead and I'm going to add a new class to the project which is going to hold several properties for us. So I'm just going to name this application info and inside of our application info I'm going to add three properties here and if I come back over here I can paste these in that's going to be an icon path which is going to map to a image inside of our images folder, a name, and then an author. And then of course we have our constructor here which is our application info. Next up I'm going to go back to my main page .xaml.cs and I'm going to fix my using statements like I did before. So I've added a couple of using statements that I'm going to use in this sample. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create two observable collections for my all applications and then for my applications. So before the main page, I want to simply paste this in so you can see we have two observable collections of our application info class. And the first one, we're about to write this method to generate application infos, which is going to give us just a short list of items. And then, of course, we have our application collection, application info of called My Applications. So this is going to be doing a very similar thing that we did in the first demo, except for it's going to be using a RAD tab control. So after we have that in place, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop in my code for generate application infos. So I'm going to simply paste that in and you can see here that it's just going to be adding some dummy data to my all applications. So once that's in place, I'm going to go back to my initialize component. I'm going to add in a loaded event here. And inside of the loaded event, I'm just going to set the item source. So I'm going to replace this code with an all applications box dot item source and then a my applications box dot item source equals to the my applications and all that this is going to be doing is it's going to be setting a item source of two list boxes that we're about to create so if I now scroll under my first class here I can actually paste in another class that I've already created and I'm just going to scroll back up here to the top where we can see it a little bit better. So I've created this class here called Draggable List Box that is based off of a standard list box, system.windows.controls.listbox. And inside of the constructor here, you can see we're going to begin to set our rad drag and drop manager to allow drop. 
After that, we're going to create several query handlers. So if you remember from the first video, the info events are basically there to inform you about something, and the query events are going to be asking for some sort of permission, like can we do this to the control. After that's in place, we have our first own drop info. So the own drop info event here is actually going to fire on a successful drop and what it's going to do is it's going to actually add the item to the item source else if the source item and the source list box and we finally see the payload is not equal to null then it's going to just remove the item from the source item next we scroll down we see the own drop query so this will happen after the drag query event has completed. So this is actually going to get or set the result of the query. So this result allows or denies actions in the drag and drop process. Next, I've just added the own drag info just for completeness. We're not actually using it in this sample, but it's here in case you want to look at it once you explore the sample code yourself. Then we have the own drag query. So this is going to take an item from our draggable list box control that we're building here and it's going to set the content control to the content template to our application drag template which we're about to create in just a moment when we get to the UI. Finally we finish up with the prepare container for item override and then the clear container for item override. And if the item override is acceptable then we're going to set the allow drag drop and allow drop to true else if we're going to clear it we're just going to set the allow drag and then a set allow drop to false here so let's switch back to our main page .xaml, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in my XML namespace for Telerik drag drop which is going to map to telerik.windows.controls.dragdrop in the assembly telerik.windows.controls. Next up we're going to be using our rad tab control. So I'm going to go underneath the grid here and I'm going to paste in telerik rad tab control. And before we get too far along in this let's just go ahead and let's add the navigation to this project. So if we scroll down, we will place a check here in telerik.windows.controls.navigation. That's actually where the tab control lives. And I'm going to hit finish here, and you'll notice that it added it to our project for us automatically. So I can come back here and I can close out these tags. And now that we've added the references, we've defined a rad tab control and we've set several properties but the property that we want to look at here is that we've set allow drag over tab to true so this is going to allow us to drag and drop using this framework over the different tabs so I've added my first tab item in here which is called all applications now I'm going to be using the control that we just created in our main page.xaml so I'm going to come back and I'm going to go XML namespace local equals and I'm going to just navigate down to our CLR namespace of rad drag drop tab control TTV so now I can go ahead and paste in my all applications so on my first tab I've just pasted in a draggable list box that we defined earlier and let's just go ahead and let's create our second tab item and look at them both together and underneath my rad tab item I'm going to paste this in so I'm going to scroll back up to the top and we're going to look at this together so we have our rad tab control which we talked about earlier then we have our all applications so this uses a local draggable list box and then we set a resources here it's going to simply be a data template with the key of application drag template that just has an image in it that's binding to icon path. We can scroll down just a tad here and we can see the draggable listbox.item container style where we're setting a horizontal alignment and horizontal content alignment to just stretch. And then we have an item template, a data template, and then finally we have a doc panel. 
we've included inside of that doc panel the image binding to icon path, the text block binding to name, and then another text block binding to the author. And the rest of these here are just our close tags. On our second tab item here, it's called My Applications. And you can see again we're using our draggable list box. We have our resources set to the same thing as before basically a data template that has an image. Then we have an item template, a data template inside of it with a simple stack panel, an image binding to icon path, a text block binding to name. Then we're closing a couple tags here and we finally get in to our items panel and inside of the items panel we're actually using a rad uniform grid and we're setting the horizontal alignment to left and the vertical alignment here at the top. And then of course the rest of these were just closing out of certain tags. So if we switch back over to the design view you can kind of see the two tabs that we have here. And each side each of these two tabs we have our custom list box that we created. So let's go ahead and let's run the application. Debug, start without debugging. We have a list of our different items here. I'm going to select our paintbrush and now we're going to hover over the My Applications tab and I'm going to drop it and you see we have Imagine Ink. I'm going to go back over to All Applications. I'm going to pick the CD Factory and I just dropped that in there as well. I can of course take the CD Factory, hover back over All Applications and drop it and you'll see it's been added to All Applications and it is been removed from the My Applications. So again, thank you for watching and please tune in to tv.telleric.com for more videos and blogs.telleric.com for the latest news and announcements. Thank you.